Hey guys, I'm here with the inimitable Nick Hudson from Pandata, South Africa, and he's over in London. He gave a fantastic talk last night at a great event, and I was proud to be here in London for it. And uh, you had a Q&A afterwards with... Uh, Jeffrey Jer Peel. Jeffrey Peel, yeah. exactly. So, the new era. Again, good to be face to face. <laughs> So me and Nick were, uh, as you're probably aware, did podcast back in April, May 2020, and um, we might just quickly talk about what actually happened. Sure. So we won't dwell too long on lockdowns and masks and all that stuff. We might briefly recap on that in Sweden. Now that we've had two years of data, the data's all in. It's all in. What do you reckon? <laughs> and I can censor this on certain platforms afterwards, the pieces. You, you're going to have to. Yeah. Because okay. it's devastating right there. I mean, there's absolutely no evidence supporting lockdown efficacy. In fact, there's um, some evidence that they hurt, not, not helped. Mm. And of course, with uh, aerosol transmission being acknowledged, anybody who tries to claim that uh, cloth masks are effective as a, as a lunatic and all that we can say then about all those crazy studies that were published in the crazy journals is that the scientists were lying. They were biased and the journal uh, editorial and review and peer review processes are broken for allowing those articles through. So we've got no science on the side of the narrative and all the science on the side of the, uh, of the skeptical um, community. I mean, they're 400 odd papers that have uh, conclusively mm. demonstrated that lockdowns are a bloody disaster and that they should never have been tried and that the guidelines that existed before COVID were correct. So it's done, it's finished, it's over. Mm. It's over, but most people yeah. don't realize that sadly. Not yet. That's yeah. a communication exercise that will take a long, long time. But I mean, as far as you know, anybody vaguely sensible is concerned, neither lockdowns nor cloth mask mandates are anything even to be that contemplated yeah yeah they're just not relevant no. and uh, I, I sent John actually it was only yesterday a white <coughs> paper I'm drafting and I'm up to 30 references already and I'm only a tiny way through it on exactly what you just said it's a clear-cut case case yeah. closed yeah. so Sweden then Sweden was the exemplar which we said from the very start Sweden will answer the question mm -hmm. um, absolutely unequivocally Sweden did answer the question yeah mm. yeah of course two over two years uh, Excess mortality was zero or negligible, doesn't matter which. Um, you know, they really were the control study and the control group. And um, two years, no lockdowns, no excess mortality. What does that tell you? No pandemic, really. You know, the, the, what excess mortality we saw in the rest of the world was a result of the policy response, not the epidemic itself, doing all these crazy things like treating your patients as if they're radioactive and you can't go near them and not treating them, not reassuring them, scaring the hell out of everybody, telling them that they have a deadly virus and there's nothing you can do for them until they turn blue, in which case they must come to hospital and you'll stick them on a ventilator, which will kill them. You know, that's kind of the, the story that was, that was pursued here. And so we've had a complete collapse of medical ethics, public health, common sense, you name it. Mm. And I guess, like, there was some excess mortality relating to COVID, depending on the country, depending on the age profile. I don't think so. Well, yeah. there was excess. There's always some because it's a nasty virus, well, but it's smaller probably mm. than the measures related mortality. Yeah, I mean, displaced some flu, flu deaths as well. So, you know, you, the, we, we're not talking about anything that was worthwhile responding yeah. to. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's a great way of putting it. Or as Dr. John Lee said many times in mainstream media uh, in, in the UK, he said it's in the envelope of a bad flu or severe flu. And sure. that's exactly what it was. No, and I mean, the most important thing for me that this is for me, COVID illustrates the importance of not pursuing this whole doctrine of pandemic preparedness. Yeah, because I mean, the people who are locked up in that kind of world are planning on doing what we did in COVID and more the next time they detect some nucleotides from a circulating respiratory virus or a you know, monkey whatever or it is whatever it is <laughs> I mean you know what what I've come to sort of take as the the view um, is that we, we we need to start thinking about the, the virome, the ecology of viruses and humans. And it's difficult for me to accept the proposition of a new virus. COVID was very definitely not a new virus. The World Health Organization was lying. They were contradicting the International Committee on Viral Taxonomy, which very clearly told us in February of 2020 that this was not a new virus. 
and we could see from the data that there was widespread pre-existing immunity, that a minority of the population was susceptible to severe disease and illness, and a really small minority. Okay, so this, that foundational lie was that there was a novel virus, a new virus, there isn't one. Yeah? Mm. And from an evolutionary point of view, it makes no sense to conceive of a novel virus. Viruses have been with us forever, they circulate amongst humans and they transfer between species and a huge range of species. Mm. It's logical that by now viruses will have occupied every single conceivable niche in, yeah. in our shared ecology. So there's nothing new coming along. There will be back and forth slight edits, slight changes. Mm. But our, our immune systems have evolved, co-evolved with viruses and they, they know what to, to do with them. Mm. And so you will, you will see people dying of viral epidemics only when there's a policy response. I don't think there will be significant mortality arising from any kind of viral outbreaks ever. Yeah. Um, bacterial outbreaks are a different matter, but they tend to be regionally confined and much more to do with the terrain, what, the, the condition of the local population. You know. Yeah, of course. Um, so I, I, I just don't think the whole doctrine of uh, pandemic preparedness is actually rooted in anything, uh, any form of reality or realism. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of woo-woo, pseudoscience story um, mm. that's taken grip and among a certain community, these kind of biosecurity types and virology spooks, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. We have plenty of those. And of course, we have the massive hand of industry, corporate yeah. power, pharmaceutical behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. But that does bring us on to the, uh, the WHO pandemic treaty, which I yeah. see as one of the most sinister things I've seen. Well, <laughs> since March 2020, I've seen so much sinister stuff, it's hard to even catalogue it. But this pandemic treaty is quite clearly insane. So they're taking what we clearly see in the data is a bad or severe flu level impact they're trying to enshrine the crazy interventions of lockdown, which caused more suffering and death, yeah. and in younger people than ever the virus would cause. And they're trying to enshrine it and make sure there's no Swedens, that everyone together is under the cosh. Yeah. That's insane, right? Yeah, I, I'm doubtful as to how successful they, they, they will be in this effort. Uh, I don't think people have appetite for another round of this malarkey, but... Um, it is something that we have to be mindful of and push back against. And it's not just the treaty, it's the international health regulations uh, mm. and uh, the edits they want to perform there. But I think there will be some political resistance and it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, you know, certain governments are more captured than others. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, so South Africa, for example, has got a completely, they're completely captured both by the mindset and I think probably from a corruption point of view and they will the, the South African government's uh, delegation will support the treaty and and be a contributor to the to all sorts of lunacy in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other countries, there's there's they don't maybe have the same degree of um, control and capture in place, and there will probably be more pushback from them. Mm. So. And UK yeah. is an example where there was some sanity mm -hmm. maintained in mainstream on and off yeah. over the last two years. Yeah. Um, but Ireland, sadly, where I'm from, yep. I was know. total <laughs> psycho. <laughs> psycho. <laughs> Most yeah. locked down in Europe. Ireland, so Canada, Germany, you know, there uh, were, were properly New psycho Zealand. countries. New oh Zealand, my God. Australia. I mean, these, <laughs> are, these are corporate fascist states already. We, only we didn't they realize are. it. Yeah. And so we were talking last night, and it was a fantastic discussion then about going forward we, we'll have to try and continue to clarify what we just talked about, that lockdowns and masks did not do anything, that the whole nonsense was built on sand. Yeah. But that's not enough because the people, as you quite rightly pointed out, there's something missing in our modern population. Yes. 30, 40 years ago, people had common sense. They had a risk tolerance reasonably mm -hmm. and they were kind of rugged. And uh, yeah, now some courage. You know? Some, some yeah. courage. Yeah. Now I just am astonished that it's a shame to use the word cowardice, but, but it's a good word, I think, to wake people up. It's completely There's, appropriate. Yeah, yeah, there is a systemic cowardice yeah. and, and, a, and, a, and an opting out of rationality yep. across our modern population. We saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So how do we tackle that going forward? Yeah, I don't think it's a quick process. Yeah, and we also and we must acknowledge that we're in completely uncharted territory. Mm. Um, but something has gone missing and needs to be re-established. I would guess is, yeah. is in, 
more than replaced. Mm. And I think that thing is a, a sort of an orientation towards um, traditional values, towards our, in, our heritage. Um, I think a lot of baby got thrown out with bathwater in, in the process of secularization. And we didn't replace that sort of time-honored values that were embedded in our Western heritage and in, in, in the sort of Judeo-Christian faiths. Mm. Um, with anything at all when, when we ripped that sort of um, regard for, for faith and um, religious institutions out of our, our societies mm. in, in, in the space of a couple of generations, you know. Yeah. And, and so what happens is it leaves a hole, people feel the hole and they grab onto anything that looks vaguely um, like an authority figure, like a father figure. And so you kind of get, you know, God replaced with Fauci. And that's <laughs> no, it's no good, right? It just is not going to do. Uh, Fauci yeah. has not passed the test of time. It's uh, more God failure. replaced with Lucifer yeah. than. I it guess. is. Or Lucifer is, replaced yeah. with Fauci. Well, it's even worse yeah. because it's sort of <laughs> Lucifer without any background, you know? Yeah, he doesn't um, even have form. No, <laughs> he's, he's just a pharma <laughs> goon. But you know, you said this. set of horns, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A God shaped hole. I love yes. that phrase yes. that you used last night. Yeah. And that's it. So even though you're not religious, or I'm not religious, certainly. We acknowledge the hole that's been left uh, yeah. following the destruction of religion. Well, I am actually religious, in the, but in, oh, in a, in a kind of bit. no, not oh. no, no. Oh. oh, so my view is exactly the opposite. I have low metaphysical conviction, so I don't. Have, <laughs> it's difficult for me to sort of go with a, f a full kind of um, expression of belief in mm. in, a, in a, any kind of caricature of relig religion in the sense of like a, a man with a beard in the sky kind uh. of thing, but. I am very um, attuned to the whole, the, the, the history, the, 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 re the received wisdom mm. that's embedded in religion. So I would, actually, I would actually really pull back from saying that I'm not religious, that's, that's wrong. And I, I'm the opposite of these people who say, you know, I'm a spiritual person, but I don't go for institutionalized religion. I'm the other way around. Yeah. Right, gotcha. I go for the religion, but not the spiritual. Yeah. And that's reminiscent maybe of some of Jordan Peterson's Hundred percent. I'm yes. very influenced by him, um, yeah. straight up, and others. I mean, he's mm. not unique. He just happens to be the one with the biggest soapbox. Mm. But, um, yeah, so, so for me, we need, we need to pay attention to that and, and find a way of talking to people who, like me, lack the, the metaphysical conviction in a way that draws their attention to the value uh, of the, the principles and memes and cultural uh, paraphernalia that uh, was inherited by way of our religions, you know, mm. that has to be reasserted. Because without it, we're nowhere. We don't, those are the ways in which we learn how to regard each other and risk and society, how to, how to you know, adopt the right posture in the world, how to negotiate complexity, danger, um, conflicts of interest, you know. Moral judgment. Moral judgment, yeah. it's, all, it's all there. And um, instead, you know, when we haven't got that, it's so easy for this kind of utilitarian mindset to creep in. Mm. And you see the people with their spreadsheets trying to design society. Technocracy, essentially. Technocracy, socialism, mm. sort of the Marxist, utilitarianist way of thinking. Yeah. Or social engineering basically yeah that's that's exactly yeah. it we are wide open we're like cattle really mm. to be herded yeah. without those those unifying bonds of tradition culture yeah. pride in your history and also if you know your history and they're actually almost trying to erase history mm. you know statues pulled down all mm. this other madness which i think yeah. it's connected to the problems in the world today w well you mm. mention stoicism quite often and that's mm. something i'm also deeply sympathetic to and really if you look at the the, the Christian virtues, they, they consist of the four Stoic virtues with the oh. faith, hope and charity appended to them. So it's the seven, the seven virtues that are received through oh. the Catholic Church are actually the original four Stoic virtues with these, the addition of the sort of New Testament virtues. And I think that's what we need to sort of be making, we need to be asserting, is a return to value or virtue-based morality we don't, you, we don't calculate, we don't do a spreadsheet to decide what's virtuous in the world. Mm. We look to the, the values and the virtues. And that's 
that's the distinction I think that's that's really important and the one that has to, has to be driven home um, and in the face of which I, th I believe the the kind of shallow insubstantial nature of the, the greater good arguments the utilitarian arguments becomes woefully evident no. yeah and yeah. um, they're essentially hijacking yeah the the machinery we used to have that used yes. to work yes they're hijacking the machine yes. and they're running it in full rev and, and it's both both the personal and the psychological machinery mm. and the cultural machinery yeah. yeah and then the virtue signaling that's so astonishing to us yes the i'm into the latest thing yes as it jumps yes. from you know a war over somewhere in europe or it was Corona, or it's monkeypox. It's always looking for sympathy and fear, fear for our lives, playing on the cowardice and the hollowness inside us, and then virtue, yeah. giving people something to be virtuous. I mean, like, oh, I'm helping to save Granny with a dirty piece of cloth on my face. It's no, so no. easy to do, yeah. and yeah. it fills That's your hole. That's not virtuous behavior. You, I know, you're lacking a, wisdom. You're lacking. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. lacking. Um, judgment, you're lacking courage, pseudo virtues. So it's two, two of the four stoic virtues just yeah. flattened right there, you know. Um, mm. and, and it's yeah. nonsense too, so yeah. it's insulting to the human intellect That's right. to fall for that nonsense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a tough one ahead. I know you've got to run to other meetings in London, busy yeah. morning, so uh, great conversation, Wonderful. and we'll follow up again. Yeah, we should do it. Uh, it's, it's really great doing things face to face, though, isn't it? I, I, I oh, think I'm going to yeah. have to start coming back here more often, coming here to London more often because. The community is actually so strong, you know, when, when I realized how many people I knew here and, and you know, you set a social function up and sort of suddenly there are 40 or 50 people there you didn't know two years ago. Yeah. This is, London has become a little bit of a focal point for the, the whole skeptical It movement. has. And the team there last night crowded outside in the bar afterwards, fantastic. It's overflowing. And it was and wonderful. It, and it just shows you, the, I met Bev Turner and she said, yeah. oh, we have a show tonight on yeah. GB News talking yeah, yeah. about risk and tolerance of risk. Would you come on? And I mean, risk. Are, I've spent decades in risk management, sure. FMEA, yeah. and also. So it's going to be a great conversation, I think. Wonderful. And that's by yeah. real life meeting. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Uh, yeah. Life in analog, as uh, Neil, Neil Oliver and I have mm. been uh, referring to it. That's what we need. The, life the digital around. life is, um, is, is for the birds. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's a great way, a great kind of catchphrase to end it. Digital yeah. life is full of birds. We'll use the digital to help people. We'll use the tools, but analog life is where we have to go. That's where we are. Get back to. Yeah. Good man, Nick. Cheers, Ivor. Great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> As always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And please do comment below. We need to have these conversations. And thanks so much. Really appreciate all the people who support me to continue to do all this investigative reporting, data analysis, and everything else I do to bring real clear interpretation of science and data so that people can understand what's going on in the world today and somewhat be inoculated against the stream of kind of sometimes nonsense that emerges from the corporate controlled media. So no conspiratorial stuff there. It's just a reality that media has essentially collapsed over the last years and decades uh, due to the so much dependency on government and advertiser funding uh, and many other factors that have kind of sadly destroyed our, our mass media. So my Patreon, you can join up. I do monthly Zoom calls for certain categories, uh, get vlogs out there. And again, it's a way for me to continue to do this work that I feel, and hopefully you feel, is hugely important in today's world. Thank you.